Gospel hymn and songs number 21. Will your anchor hold? Will your anchor hold in the storms of life? When the clouds unfold their wings of strife? When the strong tides lift and the cables spin, will your anchor drift or firm remain? In the safely mold, will the storm withstand, for it is well secured by the Savior's hand. And the cables passed from his heart to mine can defy the blast through strength divine. It will firmly hold in the straits of fear. When the breakers have told the reef is near, though the tempest rave and the wild wings blow, not an angry wave shall our back overflow. It will surely hold in the floods of death. When the waters cold shields our latest breath, on the rising tides it can never fail. While our hopes abide within the veil. When our eyes behold through the gathering night, the city of God, our harbor bright, we shall anchor fast by the heavenly shore, with the storms all pass forevermore. We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll, fasting to the rock which cannot move grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love.
that keeps our soul. So open your mouth and begin to talk to the Lord this morning. Whatever storm, whatever problem, whatever challenge you are passing through this morning, everything before the Sunday message today, we shall have a brief period of scripture reading. The Acts of the Apostles. The Acts of the Apostles. Acts 14. Acts 14. And it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews, and so spake that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also of the Greeks, believed. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil affected against the brethren. Long time therefore abode they speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace, and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. But the multitude of the city was divided, and part held with the Jews, and part with the apostles. And when there was an assault made both of the Gentiles and also of the Jews with their rulers to use them despitefully and to stone them, they were ware of it, and fled into Lystra and Derbe, cities of Lycaonia, and unto the region that lieth round about. And there they preached the gospel. And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him, and perceiving that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand upright on thy feet. And he leaped and walked. And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in the speech of Lycaonia, The gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. And they called Barnabas Jupiter, and Paul Mercurius, because he was the chief speaker. 
Then the priest of Jupiter, which was before their city, brought oxen and garlands unto the gates, and would have done sacrifice with the people, which when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of, they rent their clothes and ran in among the people, crying out and saying, Sirs, why do ye these things? We also are men of like passions with you, and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God, which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are therein who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness, in that he did good, and gave us rain from heaven, and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. And with these sayings, scarce restrained they the people that they had not done sacrifice unto them. And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium, who persuaded the people, and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. Howbeit, as the disciples stood round about him, he rose up and came into the city, and the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derbe. And when they had preached the gospel to that city, and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra, and to Iconium and Antioch confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. And when they had ordained them elders in every church and had prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord on whom they believed. And after they had passed throughout Pisidia, they came to Pamphylia. And when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down into Atalia and thence sailed to Antioch, from whence they had been recommended to the grace of God for the work which they fulfilled. And when they were come and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them, and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. And there they abode long time with the disciples. Acts 15 and certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed, saying, that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us, that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ we shall be saved, even as they. Then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. And after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, Hearken unto me. Simeon hath declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. And to this agree the words of the prophets, as it is written, After this I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David which is fallen down, and I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up, that the residue of men might seek after the Lord, and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who doeth all these things. Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. Wherefore my sentence is that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to God, but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols, and from fornication, and from things strangled, and from blood. For Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. 
then pleased at the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas, surnamed Barsabbas, and Silas, chief men among the brethren. And they wrote letters by them after this manner. The apostles and elders and brethren send greeting unto the brethren which are of the Gentiles in Antioch and Syria and Cilicia. For as much as we have heard, that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words subverting your soul, saying, Ye must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandment. It seemed good unto us, being assembled with one accord, to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have sent therefore Judas and Silas, who shall also tell you the same things by mouth. For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that ye abstain from meats offered to idols, and from blood, and from things strangled, and from fornication, from which, if ye keep yourselves, ye shall do well. Fare ye well. So when they were dismissed, they came to Antioch, and when they had gathered the multitude together, they delivered the epistle, which when they had read, they rejoiced for the consolation. And Judas and Silas, being prophets also themselves, exhorted the brethren with many words and confirmed them. And after they had tarried there a space, they were let go in peace from the brethren unto the apostles. Notwithstanding, it pleased Silas to abide there still. Paul also and Barnabas continued in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others also. And some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord, and see how they do. And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought not good to take him with them, who departed from them from Pamphylia, and went not with them to the work. And the contention was so sharp between them, that they departed asunder one from the other. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus. And Paul chose Silas, and departed, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. And he went through Syria and Cilicia, confirming the churches. May God help us to be doers of the word. Amen. Yes, we should pity the man in this world who must use the earth for a bed. And I guess we should pity the man who must toil from dawn till dust falls bread. 
But this can be rich if they have contentment and sharing for salvation plan. But if you know any who know they have plenty, I must then pity the man. A builder who builds all the sand. For rocking to be saved is a thing. If it's lost, then it's a man. I guess there are those who pity. The saved as though they were missing life's best, forgetting the treasures of it pass away, and that heaven's the place to invest. Oh, meanwhile, a seeming the man who is scheming to hold up the wealth that he can but if while he's living to God is not giving his soul then pity the man pity the man who has treasures to hold and he goes on the tales of his pride oh, The giver of life, traveler, romantic, a builder who build on the sand. Papa rocking to be saved is the thing lost can pity the man. Giver of Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this hour. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you because you are forever the same. You are God and you change not. Therefore, none of your people will be consumed. 
Lord Jesus, we thank you because you are forever the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. And therefore, we're believing what you did in days gone by, you will do in every life. No exception. No unfortunate brother or sister. No unfortunate youth or adult. Everyone you'll bless today in Jesus' name. Our children are blessed. Our young people are blessed. Our fathers and mothers, leaders, ministers, we're all blessed in Jesus' name. Come down, Lord, afresh and open our understanding. Help us to behold wondrous, wonderful things out of your word in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Another amen. A final, final amen. You can see that we're coming to First Peter chapter 5. And I'm reading some selected verses here. In First Peter chapter 5, verse 1. The elders which are among you, I exhort, who am also an elder, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Verse 10, But the God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory, by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered for a while, make you perfect, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. You know, sometimes when you read the Bible and you come across a particular word, and you have always understood that word a particular way. When you read that word in the Bible, you many times do not understand the meaning of the word in the Bible. You go back to your past understanding, and you go back to the dictionary what does this word mean? And when you thought you had got the meaning, then you read that meaning into the Bible and say, this is what the Bible means. And you go off. And everything you read after that, you really don't understand. And you miss the blessing of God. God will open our eyes. I will not miss the blessing of God. I read verse 1 to you. In verse 1, there's one word, suffering. I read verse 10 to you. In that verse 10, there's also the word suffering. And then we close our Bible, suffering, suffering, suffering. As if the whole of life is taken up with suffering. And what do we call suffering? We equate suffering with sickness, with attack, with affliction, with Satan, with the whole of the world against us look at that verse again the elders which are among you i exhort who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of christ the sufferings of christ christ 
did not suffer sickness, cancer, leukemia, tuberculosis, blindness, deafness, paralysis, sufferings of Christ. He's talking about Calvary. He's talking about the betrayal. And he's talking about what Jesus went through for you and for me. He had nothing to suffer for, for himself, by himself. The sufferings of Christ from the attack of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Not demonic attack, not Christ. Not satanic attack, not Christ. And Peter said, I suffer in line with the Lord Jesus Christ. He was arrested, not sickness, Peter. He was incarcerated, not sickness. We're talking about Peter. He was put in prison, not sickness. What he was talking about is the persecution that came to the early church ministers, pastors, evangelists, and also the apostles. But you know, people stop at that. Look at what follows there. And also a partaker. Also a partaker. I went through the sufferings of Christ. Not sickness, not sickness, not sickness. And then... I became a partaker of the glory. What does that mean? When Jesus was tried and tested in temptation, at the end of the temptation, the angel came and ministered unto him. And Peter said, when I was in prison, I saw glory in the night. An angel also came at me like this all my chains fell off all your chains will fall off yeah. and then told me to rise you will rise today in strength yeah. and then as we are going I'm telling you I saw glory I never saw this before as we were going and the iron door was before us the iron door opened by itself we didn't have to hammer it we don't have to shout. We didn't have to do anything. And your iron doors will open. Yeah. And then I came out. And then I thought. I never saw this before. I thought it was a dream. I thought it was a vision. But the Lord has sent his angel. And all the expectations of the Jews concerning me. Everything was defeated and all the expectation of your enemies concerning you everything vanishing today in jesus name today as we look at the passage that we're considering in first peter chapter 5 i'm talking to you on divine provision and care for god's faithful flock divine provision and care for God's faithful flock. We need to understand that from salvation to glorification, from the beginning of our Christian journey unto the consummation, unto the final end of our Christian journey, God has made adequate provision for all needs in our lives, adequate provision for all the needs of your life. We're looking at the word of God on divine provision and care for God's faithful flock. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the purposeful feeding of God's precious flock. The purposeful feeding of God's precious flock. Point number two, the promised exaltation of Christ's humble followers. The promised exaltation. Are you ready for exaltation? The promised exaltation of Christ's humble 
followers. Number three, the princely care of Christ's prayerful friends. The princely care of Christ's prayerful friends. Point number one. What's point number one? Say it, say it now. Our feeding on the word has a purpose. We come to church, hear the word of God. There is a purpose. We read the Bible in our houses. There is a purpose. We take the word of God, feeding. There is a purpose. The preacher feeds on the word. The pew the members will feed on the word. Every time, everywhere, we feed on the word. Feeding on the word has a purpose. We must not feed and remain faint. Feed and remain feeble. Feed and remain faceless. Feed and remain weak you will not remain weak look at chapter 5 verse 2 feed the flock which is among you feed the flock which is among you you can testify that in our church here our preachers our ministers our sectional leaders in every meeting at every opportunity that's what we do Feed the flock of God. Let's come to John chapter 21. Reading from verse 15. The last line of verse 15, feed my lambs. The last line of verse 16, feed my sheep. And the last line of verse 17, feed my sheep. That's what we do from the lambs to the sheep, from the members to the ministers, from the children to the youth to the adults. That's what we do. We feed the lambs, we feed the flock. Chapter 6, verse 34. John 6, reading from verse. 34 it says in verse 34 then said they unto him lord evermore give us this bread that's what jesus did he fed the people with the word of god and that's what we're doing today feeding the membership of the church with the word verse 63 63 it is the spirit the quickness the flesh profiteth nothing the words that i speak unto you they are spirit and they are life the words that i speak unto you they are spirit and they are life the purpose of the word the power of the word when that word enters it will act like a reviving spirit it will act like a renewing spirit it will act like the spirit that comes to you and you are resurrected every weakness will be taken away from you and in that verse 63 it says the words are lie if you have any weakness if you have anything dying in your life when the word comes in you will come alive Amen. and today you come alive Amen. i come alive i come alive the purpose of feeding purposeful feeding of god's precious flood is meant to revive you it's meant to resurrect you it's meant to enlighten you. It's meant to show you light 
and it's made to make you strong. You eat, you become strong. Feed, you become strong. And the word normally without another thing. You know, sometimes when you're hungry, almost fainting, no stress, totally weak, and then you're called, it is supper time, or breakfast time, or lunch time. And then you take that food, and you drink water on it, the weakness is gone. Am I right? And all the fainting, you know, everything is gone. The same thing with the word of God. When you eat the word, when you take the word, and the water of the word refreshes your life, you will not be the same again in Jesus' name. Acts chapter 20, reading from verse 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock. How many people in the flock? How many people are we feeding in the flock? Tell me now. All the flock. Are you part of this? And the purpose of feeding must be fulfilled in your life. And know over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God. To feed the church of God. Feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. The flock purchased with his own blood. Many people don't talk as if they know that they have been purchased at a high price. From where were they purchased? We cannot just say from society, there was somebody that held you captive, wanted to waste your life, wanted to destroy your life, and you were helpless. You were his property and now Jesus with his blood came and snatched you out from the hand of that one that held you captive and he purchased you with his precious blood he purchased you from whose hand I said he purchased you from whose hand I can't hear you from Satan's hand and he has not decided and he will not decide I purchase you because you are precious and I purchase you from Satan's hands I throw you back to the devil is he going to do that how are you going about are you saying Satan will not leave me alone. I thought you were purchased. I thought you were rescued. I thought you had redeemed you. And you are no more a property of Satan. Look up at me here. I am not a property of Satan. Even the ears on your head are all numbered. The fingernails are all numbered. And every part, every cell in your body, purchased by the Lord, you will not go back to Satan. The flock of God, whom he has purchased with his own blood, feed them, feed the people of God. When we are fed, what's the result? When we are fed, what's the result? Jeremiah. Reading from verse 3. Jeremiah chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 15. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15. And I will give you pastors. According to my heart, I will give you, tell me, 
pastors according to my heart if god gives us any pastor at all he gives us pastors according to his heart if somebody chose another person and god is not involved and he says go pastor that church if God's son is not there, if it is by the choice of the people, if it is by campaign, if it is by lobbying, give us a pastor and give us Mr. So-and-so. And that Mr. So-and-so is giving to them. That so-and-so is not according to the heart of God. But when God decides to give us a pastor that pastor will be according to his heart we shall tell me feed you with knowledge and understanding feed you with knowledge the knowledge of what christ has done the knowledge of who christ is Jeremiah chapter 15, I'm reading from verse 16. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. When you find the words of God, and God gives you a leader, a pastor, a teacher, and he teaches you the word of God according to his mind. You find that word, you eat that word. You will be strong. You will be righteous. You will have assurance. You will stand with stability and strength. You'll be like the rock. You will not be moved in Jesus' name. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy words was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart. How can you come to the house of God and you hear everything the Lord has provided for you from the word of God and you eat the word and you're still sorrowful, you're still sad, you're still crying. Other people are going home rejoicing. You're outside there and the ushers are holding you while you are, you know, making a noise and shouting and crying. I am miserable. They didn't allow me to see so and so. You are not miserable. You are not taking in the word of God. As you take in the word of God, joy will come to your life. Your failure will turn to success. Your sicknesses will go. And all the infirmities and all the power of Satan against your life, they are broken in Jesus' name. Thy words were found. And I did eat them. And Thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. I am called by God's name. I said I am called by God's name. Look at Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 4. Jeremiah chapter 23 i'm reading from verse 4 and i will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them i will set up shepherds plural plural not only here at the central church in our districts in our groups in all those locations shepherds that shall feed us shepherds that will feed us look at what follows verse 4 i will set up shepherds over them we shall feed them and tell me tell me they shall fear no more just the word we're not talking of prayer now we're not talking of 
calling anyone. We're not talking of sending an SOS to God just by feeding on the word of God. Because whatever the word says will be done. Whatever the word proclaims will be achieved in every life in Jesus' name. And just feeding on the word of God, they shall fear no more. In your life, no fear. In my life, no fear. In your family, no fear. In your place of work, no fear. When you hear the word of God, you understand that the almighty God determines every detail of your life. Enemy cannot, the enemy cannot decide any detail in your life. If they try, they're wasting their precious time. Your life is in the hands of the Almighty. They shall fear no more, nor be dismayed. You will not be dismayed. You will not be confused. Neither shall they be lacking, says the Lord. Says the Lord. Says the Lord. Who said you will not lack? I said, who said you will not lack? The almighty God that said it, it is done. Look at Psalm 107. Psalm 107. I'm reading from verse 20. He sent his word, tell me, he sent his word, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. You are delivered, you are healed. That's the word. Speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. You're healed in Jesus' name. Abundance in your life through the word in Jesus' name. Point number two the promised exaltation of Christ's humble followers. The promised exaltation of Christ's humble followers. Let's come to First Peter chapter 5, verse 5. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. Giveth grace to the humble. Have you noticed there there are two sets of people there? The proud. They lose a lot. God receives them, keeps them at arm's length, at a distance. But the other group, the humble, God gives us more grace. God give you more grace. Verse 6, humble yourselves, therefore, 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 because of what he will give to the humble. Because of what he will do to the humble. Because of the exaltation is bringing to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. You will not be under the mysterious hand of Satan. 
Satan will not be around you. Satan will not be on the roof of your house. If there's any sound there, it's either, you know, something electronic is sounding there or the wind is blowing something there. The wind is not Satan. Satan will not be on your roof. It says, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. You'll be under the mighty hand of God. That he may exalt you in due season. I see exalted people here. I said, I see exalted people here. Concentrate on God and look at God and be under the mighty hand of the almighty God. He will exalt you in Jesus' name. Now, let's come back to this idea of suffering. 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 Many people don't understand even if you are suffering, do you know that humility alone, humility alone can reverse your suffering? You didn't answer me. First Kings chapter 21 verse 21, Behold, I will bring evil upon thee, and will take away thy posterity, and will cut off from Ahab, him that pieces against the wall, and him that is shut up and led in Israel. And then he goes on and on. Verse 27 now. And it came to pass when, tell me, Ahab heard those words that she rent his clothes and put sack clothes upon his flesh and fasted and lay his sack clothes and went, tell me, Ahab went softly. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite saying, Seest thou how Ahab humbles himself before me? He humbles himself before me because he humbles himself before me. I will not bring the evil in his days. You see that? God has said, go tell him, wicked man. Wicked Ahab. I'm going to destroy him. I will do this and I will do that. Even though Ahab was like looking at Elijah as an enemy. Have you found me? Oh, my enemy? Yes, I found you. Because you've sold yourself to do evil. Hear the judgment of God. And when he heard, he thought about it. He went softly. And God said, Elijah, look at Ahab. I didn't expect this. He humbles himself before me because of that humility. I'm going to give him grace. He will give you grace. And all the evil I pronounced against him because of the humility, I will not bring it again upon him. Just, just be humble. Many problems are solved. Just walk softly in the sight of God. Many of the things we are complaining about, on the one hand, the word is coming unto you, and the word will heal all your sicknesses. On the other hand, you are humble, and because of that humility, your healing is already confirmed. Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. Maybe you don't know how to fast and pray, but if you humble yourself, maybe you don't know how to quote many verses of scripture. If you humble yourself, 
Maybe you don't understand all those mysterious secrets of curse, Satan, evil spirits, this and that. But if you just humble yourself, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray the way they know how and seek my face the way they know how and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven. The voice of every humble person will be heard in heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. It will heal your family. It will heal your body. It will heal everything that is aching in your life in Jesus' name. Genesis chapter 41. I'm reading from verse 16. Genesis chapter 41, verse 16. And Joseph answered Pharaoh. Hold on. Remember, Joseph, we're talking about suffering. That man suffered, not sickness. Joseph, that man suffered, not venereal disease. Joseph, that man suffered, not attack, affliction of Satan, persecution. His brothers sold him, and they sold him to slavery. And then Potiphar's wife told a lie concerning him. Potiphar's wife could not bring tuberculosis on him. That's not the suffering. Could not bring sickness on him. That's not the suffering. Every time some people hear suffering, 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 they think about sickness. Joseph suffered, but he was not sick. You are well. I am well. You are well in Jesus' name. You must change your language. You must change your understanding about suffering. Now come to chapter 41 verse 16. And Joseph answered Pharaoh saying, It is not in me. God shall give a Pharaoh an answer of peace. That's humility. I, Pharaoh said, I've heard of you. And I want you to demonstrate what I've heard. That you're able to interpret dreams. And whatever you interpret, that's what my cupbearer told me. And that's what my baker, that's what they said about the baker. That what you said was fulfilled. Now come, show me. And he will not allow any flattery. And he said, no, it is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Is that pride or humility? I said, is that humility or pride? Humility. Look at the result. By the way, Joseph had a dream. And that dream, the persecutors of Moses, they wanted to drown the dream. Kill the dream. Kill the dreamer. He will not succeed. Your enemies are liars. He will not come up. All they say negative about you will go into the dust and dustbin. You will come up. You will rise again. They think is selling into Egypt. They thought that was the end enemy will not end your life yeah. look at it now we're reading from this chapter 41 verse 38 verse 38 and Pharaoh said 
unto his servants can we find such a one as this is a man in whom the spirit of god is and pharaoh said unto joseph and pharaoh said unto what's your name and pharaoh said unto what's your name promotion has come exaltation has come all the suffering of persecution and denial everything is coming to an end today and pharaoh said unto joseph for as much as god has showed thee all this there is none so district discreet and wise as thou you'll have divine wisdom Thou shalt be over mine house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said unto who? And Pharaoh said unto who? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. Humility brings exaltation. And as you humble yourself before God, hold on, humility doesn't mean you surrender yourself to the enemy. The enemy is coming, Haman. They said, we shall be humble. And then you roll in the dust under Haman. That one is cowardice. That one is fear of man. That one is not humility. You stand your ground in the presence of Haman. Somebody tell me, give me a good amen. amen. Haman enemy of righteousness enemy of the jews enemy of progress enemy that won't brag in and said i will finish him if you bow and bench because Haman said i will finish him that one is not humility that one is fear i'm afraid they said they will finish me but they cannot finish you Look up at me here. Can they finish me? Any sin that cannot finish me cannot finish you. You know how old I am now? You will be as old as I am. Older. Older. Older in Jesus' name. They will not finish your life. They will not finish your destiny. But, 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 in the presence of God, you humble yourself, exaltation will come. You are exalted already. You are promoted already. If you have heard about the law, physical laws, the law of gravity. And the way I can explain that, I'm sure you understand, throw anything up, the law of gravity will bring it down. Is that right? The law of gravity works because God sets it up. And God has set it up. Anyone who throws up himself, who exalts himself, it will come down. There's another law. It's the law of sowing and reaping. You take the seed. You put it in the ground. It cannot go lower than that. And then that seed that is down will come up. Will grow up. Will bear fruit. And the fruit will be profitable for society. It's a law. Put it down. Humble yourself. Hide yourself.
don't be proud about anything and as you humble yourself like that seed comes up i see you you'll come up like that seed bears fruit i see you it's a law it's a law it must be fulfilled you will bear fruit in jesus name congratulations praise the lord you have a testimony the lord will put testimony in your mouth in jesus name humble yourself in the sight of the lord he will lift you up in due season he will lift you up when he will lift you up i said when james chapter 4 verse 6 james chapter 4 verse 6 he giveth more grace wherefore he says God resisted the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. Verse 10, humble yourselves, therefore, in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. He will lift you up. When God says yes, nobody can say no. Don't think about your background, about your family, about your village, about what happens to cousin, happen to brother, happen to sister. God has singled you out. He will lift you up in Jesus' name. Point number three now, the princely care of Christ's prayerful friends. First Peter chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 7. First Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Casting how many cares? All your care upon him, for he careth for you you know don't go about saying i have nobody you have god you have christ you have the holy spirit you have the promise of god you have the power of the holy ghost you have inheritance in heaven and you have your savior the spirit the comforter abiding with you all your cares are taken care of casting all your care upon him for he cares for you he calls your friend look at john chapter 15 john chapter 15 and i'm reading from verse 13 john chapter 15 we're reading from verse 13 Look at this. Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. That a man lay down his life for his friend. Look up here. Let's say somebody was in the prison. He has been sentenced to life imprisonment and at the end of that life imprisonment they're not going to allow him to die peacefully they're going to take him and they're going to kill him in a violent way but now somebody comes and he says i'll pay the price whatever he has done i will undo it and then he released him from the prison where he had life sentence. After coming out of the prison, now he needs a piece of bread. The person who paid the high price 
to take him out of the prison will he give him can he give him a piece of bread of course now he needs clothes to clothe himself the one who has taken him out of life in prison image can he give him clothes to wear of course yes he needs accommodation a room somewhere a shelter and the one who has uh, redeemed him and bought him and paid the price to get him out of life imprisonment will he give him shelter the lord jesus christ has bought you redeemed you and taken you away from life imprisonment from eternal suffering and he paid for the price of his precious blood. Will he give you breakfast? Will he give you clothing? Will he give you success? Will he give you prosperity? Will he give you anything you need? He will. And he calls your friend. Jesus calls me friend. Jesus calls you friend somebody is harassing somebody rough handling him and they want to strangle him and then a soldier brigadier general armed to the teeth is coming along and he looks at people that are rough handling somebody and he looks at the person they are off handling and he says why that's my friend will he just pass by leave him in the hands of those who want to take life out of him jesus is the power of heaven and earth jesus is the one that conquered satan on the cross of calvary and he said it is finished and he calls you friend and he's passing by and he's looking down at all the people on earth and he sees somebody there all the evil powers all the evil spirits even they didn't know they're defeated they're trying to rough handle you and jesus looks at somebody there who are they rough handling and he says that's my friend any friend of jesus there that's my friend any friend of jesus there that's my friend will he turn the other way and allow satan to destroy you no never no a million times he will not allow it look at this john chapter 15 Verse 14, yeah, my friends, if you do whatsoever, I command you. Henceforth, I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard, of my father have i made known unto you i am his friend i said i am his friend luke chapter 11 in luke chapter 11 i'm reading here from verse 5 luke chapter 11 reading from verse 5 and he said unto them which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him friend lend me three loaves for a friend of mine in his journey is come to me and I have nothing to search before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not, the door is now shut. 
and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, yet, yet, because of his importunity, he will rise and give him, tell me, he will rise and give you, he will rise and give us as many as we need, as many as he needed. And I say unto you, ask, is your friend? It shall be given unto you. Seek, is your friend? You shall find. Knock, knock at the door of your friend, and it shall be opened unto you. I am blessed. I am blessed. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely, freely, freely give us all things? All things are yours. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, reading from verse 6. In Philippians chapter 4, reading from verse 6, here it says, Be careful for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Be fearful for nothing. And be worried about nothing. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. After that prayer, look at the result in verse 13. I can do all things now through Christ, which strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ, who strengthens me. Verse 19, but my God shall supply but my God shall supply. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. All things are yours. All things are mine. All things are mine. Psalm 55, verse 22. Psalm 55, verse 22. Cast thy body upon the Lord. Don't carry your load yourself. Don't carry the body yourself. The body of a sick wife. The body of a wayward child. The body of lost job. The burden of oppression, the burden of suffering you couldn't explain before, but now you can explain. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall sustain thee. This thing will not destroy you. He shall sustain thee. The sin will not take life out of you. He shall sustain thee. This thing will not kill you. He shall sustain thee. 
He shall never allow, permit, suffer the righteous to be moved. You will not be moved. And you will not be denied. I shall not be denied. I shall not be denied. Since Jesus came and made me free, I will not be denied. In Psalm 61, Psalm 61, verse 2. Psalm 61, verse 2. From the end of the earth will I cry, will I call and pray unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, when my heart is overwhelmed, when it appears the water is getting into the boat and is filling up the boat and the water is seeping into my heart and the sorrow is getting into my inner man and when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. You'll come out of that sea, out of that ocean, higher, higher. Where are they? Higher. What are they? Higher. I rejoice with you. The trouble is over. The suffering is over. The overwhelming deluge of the devil is over in Jesus' name. Higher. 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 Tell him, he'll lift you up higher. Tell him, tell him, tell him, he'll lift you up higher. Higher. No problem he cannot solve. Higher. No soul he cannot save. Higher. No depression he cannot take away. Higher. No suffering he cannot remove. Higher. No problem he cannot solve higher. When my heart is overwhelmed, lift me, lift me, lift me to the rock that is higher than I. What a privileged person you are. What a precious person you are. What a blessed person you are. Higher. He lifts you high. Make sure you are saved. Make sure you are born again. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you, he loves you enough. To forgive all your sins. Love say enough to forget all your transgression. He loves you enough to lift you higher out of the dungeon of sin. And he brings you to the mountain top. Lift me to the rock that is higher than I. The Lord has answered your prayer. The Lord has seen your tears. He has wiped all your tears away. The Lord has taken all your bodies away. He has solved your problem. He has healed your body. 
as you go out now you go out in the joy of the lord i am blessed where is he where is she you are blessed in jesus name father what a caring father you are what a loving father you are what a merciful father you are and what a body bearer you are thank you lord for what you have done you have wiped the tears of your people away you have taken the sicknesses of your people away you have taken their bodies away brother the lord has answered sister daughter your problems are solved it's made your light now in your heart the sorrow is gone the heartache is gone the word has fed you and now you are fearless the word has fed you you will never be dismayed the word has fed you death will run away from you the word has come to you and all your sicknesses are healed in jesus name as you walk humbly before the lord the lord will lift you up the lord will exalt you the Lord will promote you. He'll make you higher than your past. Higher than your enemies. Higher than your opposers. Higher than your dream. Higher than what you ever thought you will be. The word of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord, speaks unto you now come up higher like joseph come up higher like the blessed of the lord come up higher god has said yes in your life the enemy cannot say no all the bodies you have Bodied upon the Lord, cast upon the Lord, he has rolled them away. Yeah. Cry no more. Yeah. Be sorrowful no more. Yeah. Don't talk about problem anymore. Yeah. Everything that overwhelmed you, the Lord has wiped away. Yeah. He has taken your bodies away. He has taken your sorrow away. He has taken all the heartache away. Go now in the joy of the Lord. The Lord has put a testimony in your mouth. Laughter in your mouth. Joy in your mouth. As you go, people will see the glory of God upon you. Higher, 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 remain on high, and nothing will decrease your blessing. It is confirmed in your life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we 